I'd like to do a quick talk, a lightning talk, about uh, password security and password policies. So first of all, I'm not a security specialist, so don't expect uh, very great insights of security. And I'm not going to talk about security policy for passwords from the point of view of the users. If you're a user, grab a password manager that doesn't push passwords to the cloud, create random passwords for your sites, and you should be done. Uh, this for the from the point of view of developers that are building apps, you want to secure your apps and make sure uh, you follow some uh, basic uh, safety safety uh, principles. So main point of the talk is reject weak passwords. So in your apps, when you do your sites, your development, you need to make sure you don't allow weak passwords to get into your system. So what is a weak password? We will hopefully during this talk, um, get a better feel of what nowadays means to to have a weak password. Uh, we're going to cover the, the typical password complexity rules that everyone knows. Uh, we're going to talk about human behavior and how brute force nowadays works to crack passwords and a few pointers how we can do this. And this will be going to be guided by what we did uh, in our project um, when we had to protect um, protect our app. So to start, in our project we knew and in our roadmap we're going to have to be ISO audited and we were going to have a third party penetration test being done to validate our app so we can deploy in production in our clients. So we knew from early on that was in the roadmap. And at some point, uh, we decided to do our own uh, internal audit ourselves. To our own, so we could f find, uh, so let's say, the low-hanging fruit, the obvious mistakes we did, so that we could fix them and then leave for the for the experts. That's just the, the, the hard stuff. So our base was uh, OWASP, OWASP.org. Uh, it's a non-profit organization, open source, uh, organ, uh, oriented around security policies and security uh, guidelines. And, and it uh, contains this very interesting thing. So it's a testing guide for, um, for web applications. So our first step was to go through this and ensure that all these procedures were um, validate these, these typical flaws that uh, applications have. Each one of these points has um, reasons to exist, has a series of steps that you can use to reproduce and try to find if your application has this flaw. And this talk in particular, we're going to focus on this one, just one of these, weak password policy. So one of the things we detected when we did this is that we had no password policy. So we, we were letting users create a space as a password. I think blanks were rejected, but that was a side effect of a bug. So we had no password policy. So the second step was, OK, let's fix it before we are audited. <laughs> and we reverted to, again, the OWASP website, which has rules for authentication. You can find here, and you can recognize this, the typical think you would expect for password complexity. You know, those typical rules. You need to have an uppercase, you need to have symbols and, and digits, minimum length, well, maximum length is big enough, 128, but th this is the typical thing you, you would expect. And what That was our initial approach that we were going to do, the, our initial thought that that was what we, we, we needed. But there's a Little link here, further reading, which points to a presentation. And what I'm going to talk is basically um, a digest of what this presentation talks about and basically says your complexity rules are useless. He does talk on the guidelines about these topologies, which at the time I read it meant nothing. But hopefully, once I talk to you about it, you'll feel what these topologies mean and what how important um, how important they are. 
So, what do we know about passwords? There's a site, this one, uh, Have I Been Owned, where you can type your password and see if your password has been leaked already. Because over the years, many, many sites have been uh, hacked and their passwords stolen, their hashes. Problem was most of them weren't even hashed properly. So, so they were in plain text, MD5, or SHA-1 now is not even enough. Um, and it's, it's, this gives us a, a corpus of actual human behavior of what type of passwords people do create. So interesting to see if you see how many were just protected with MD5, each yellow line there is one side that was just storing their passwords with MD5. Plain text. Again, a huge amount of number. So this is just free passwords for you to see. Um, so what does this body of knowledge um, teaches us? It teaches a lot about human behavior and how people create passwords when they are, they are faced with constraints. So one thing you can see, uh, for instance, those three examples, those three passwords, at, on the face of it, they seem very different. In reality, they have the same pattern. They are, they are the same thing for someone doing a brute force attack. It's an uppercase, a digit, six lower cases, two digits, and a symbol. Other things we learn about people's behavior is that if you force them to do an uppercase, for sure you're going to have the first letter as an uppercase. Maybe most of the words will be uppercase, the first letter of the words will be uppercase also, but the first one, that's almost guaranteed. All the other ones will be lowercase. If you force them to, to insert digits, people are going to put digits at the end. And normally it will be the current year. 17 or 27, oh, the year current, at the time they were asked to set or change the password. And the special characters is very interesting. By a huge distance, if you ask someone, to, if you force someone to make a special character, they're going to put an exclamation point at the end. And it's a, a big distance in terms of percentage of usage for, for all the other symbols in other positions. So we can do uh, some quick calculations. So on the presentation, it, this reference 2014. So now the data is, these, these numbers are going to be a bit off. But with $2,000, you could get a desktop with three powerful GPUs, roughly. Originally, it's a US stock, so it talks billions. So it's for us, it's 20,000 million candidates. You can test 20,000 million candidates of plain text against weak hashes. So that's MD5, old Windows systems, uh, of Active Directory. And with those numbers, a, na a naive brute force would, OK, detect easily eight characters. But when you go to 11 characters, brute force going through all the range of the 95 printable uh, ASCII characters seems like it would take ages. So it, 8,000 8, years, well, it wouldn't be 8,000, that's to exhaust all possibilities. Probably you'll find by chance some passwords before or halfway through that, but it, it is a huge number. But when you change the approach and do a selective brute force, so you focus on a pattern that you know a lot of people use, the domain of possibilities restricts a lot. So you only have seven letters. There's one uppercase, one lowercase, you have you only have digits in three places. You assume specials S thirty three, so the, that's worst case. You can start by the exclamation point always, also, always. That will be faster to detect the password. And this little desktop with eleven characters focusing on this pattern, you can take just three or four hours to 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 crack the passwords. And what would they find with this pattern? Once you look at how, you, how 
often the patterns are used, these could correspond to 12% of all the users they, of the hashes they grabbed. If you go through the top 10 or 100 patterns mostly used, you can easily get 40 to 60% of all the passwords of the users of those hashes that you've, that you've grabbed. So, what did we do and what can we do with this? So, one thing to, to take notice is also what is the risk profile of your project. So, one thing is a project that is public facing, which expects thousands of signups per day. Another one is a product that goes through a corporate sales cycle with demos and dinners with the CEO that once it gets a sale, you'll have half a dozen people in the companies to sign up as users and they are technical people. So this is completely two different risk profiles. For our risk profile, we thought blacklisting most of the common words and passwords would be enough. We're gonna show two or three ways where you could take this, uh, this thing further. So one thing we did, we used this uh, interesting library. It's a weird name, but it's just the bottom six keys of the bottom row of the QWERTY keyboard. Um, it's made by Dropbox. It's a password meter. It evaluates the strength of the password. The interesting, the interesting thing it has is that it contains already uh, 30,000 of the common passwords, common names, surnames, um, television, series, uh, ignores all the leads to speak without changing an A with an ampersand or an E by a 3 is useless, doesn't do anything, it's just one more letter to be considered. It exists for all the, you know, all the usual suspects, uh, there's ports for many languages. And what we did with our evaluation, you can try it online. We figured it was, like I said, good enough for our, uh, for our use case. So it contains, so if I use one of that, those examples before, let's say 13 at, for instance, it, it has a score. If you want to four, we, uh, we are ignoring the score. We don't care. The interesting part for us was this section warnings and suggestions. This is given by the library. So what we are doing is that instead of showing a strength meter when the user is typing the password, we accept the password. And if there are warnings or suggestions to give them, we use this feedback to give to the user, hey, fix your password, make your password better with these suggestions. We tested several things. It, it kind of corresponds with the level of score of three or four. So three and four score, there is usually no suggestions and no warnings, it considers okay. But the focus for us was, is there anything you need to make the password, you, you can do to make the password better? Um, so it, again, it's password, so it has a list of commonly used passwords, so it's immediately rejected because of that. Um, this particular substitution also uh, and highlights that switching letters by numbers does nothing nowadays. And this is, for me, the most interesting thing. Most, it's a very useful way of saying to the user, just make your password longer. It suggests to add one or two words, make it uncommon. But what it will do is actually make, increase the number of characters and make it, therefore, more safe and more difficult to crack. So if I come here and just do some words, it seems like I didn't do anything, but now it's accepted. It still has the same patterns, but now instead of 11, we are talking about 19 characters. So it was a simple change, and that suggestion, I think, is one that makes the usability of this process much, much more um, smoother. So this was good for us, for our risk profile. One thing you can do, and it's also suggested in the OWASP, again, uh, is to um, blacklist already leaked passwords. So back to the Have I Been Owned website, there's a, uh, a list of passwords you can download. So you can actually download the file, well, one file and several updates. With, well, not really the passwords, but 
you can allow SHA-1 hashes of those passwords that were leaked because some passwords could have contain um, personal information like your social security number with an email and so you can have the SHA-1 of it so one thing you can do is when you receive the password get the SHA and then check in an indexed list of all these ones if it already exists or not and you could reject it because well that's an unsafe password it's been leaked don't reuse passwords and all that going back to the talk that I mentioned earlier from this uh, core logic blog the ones who highlighted this concept of the patterns me they have actually released the top 100 patterns that they have detected the top 100 topologies that they have detected and U is uppercase, L lowercase, and the digit, if there's an S, there's for symbol. And well, I'm looking at it, I could recognize a few of my passwords in, in these patterns. Most of them are under 10, 11, 12 characters, different combinations. And they, act, they, include, they even have a, a pathwell module, but it's more of a kind of a kernel extension made to protect uh, passwords in Unix systems. So you cannot, uh, when you create a password on a Unix system, it goes through these common patterns and if you match a pattern, it rejects. And the idea is that it's, instead of staying on the big uh, concentration of mostly used patterns, if you reject those, people start having to choose a different password that falls in the tail of the last use, least used pattern. So whenever, eventually, if you have a leak, if someone manages to crack passwords, if they find a pattern, it gets 1% 1, 1 of all, all your passwords. So you reduce your, your, your risk exposure and your risk profile. Isn't, isn't there, um, shouldn't we like, actually monitor the, 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 those patterns in your own? In your, I, I mean, if this, if yeah. You could one one thing you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. The idea wouldn't be like. Yes. All the patterns would not be like there's no differences in patterns because if we say well we're going to remove all these patterns then you remove the the search space so they will they will not search for this because you said oh this is bad we know these these patterns are not so we're just not going to try the brute force just becomes expensive just becomes smaller because it bans so so many. Yeah, ideally you could have a distribution. Say these ones instead of banning, say it's been used too much. Too much. You need to choose a different ones to get a, a complete yeah. distribution. Well, I know that now yeah. It because people are now searching yeah. for these patterns, and so they will only be able to like crack like one percent or two percent maybe, or even less. So well, the common the thing is the common ones, is the top one hundred, they give you eighty percent of the of most of the uh, yeah, the passwords if you if you grab from a from a website. Yeah. Okay. One, th one thing they mentioned on the presentation is that um, you can help, you also find different patterns in different companies. So companies do have their, their most used patterns, which depends on the rules they, they, they enforce. Yeah. So the rules enforce human behavior, which then creates patterns. So that's yeah. Even, well that's, that's even more yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, everyone just goes around here. Yeah, you, you might have the security constraint, the, 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 sorry, the policy complexity restrictions. But then if you add rotation every four months, then you start getting new patterns like uh, month number or summer 17. Because uh, then people try to find uh, heuristics around the, the difficulty of remembering passwords. The problem is storing those those distributions. How, you know, like, how do you know which which uh, well, patterns are you cannot if you're only storing the ashes, how do you how do you keep the Well at some moment when you create you receive the, 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 the password in plain text, right? You yeah. need to receive it the first time to do something with it. Right. 
for the first validation. At that point, you you fork a pattern to to add. Yeah. But like I said, it's like increasing on your risk profile, you increase the possibility of restricting uh, passwords. Yeah. Yes, indeed. That's something you hear a lot. But I don't think that thought process factors in the liability and the risk and the, and the penalties you, you suffer when you are uh, hacked. When a weak password allows a, an entry point to, to access your system, to, to, to hack and start data, to steal data. If you factor, if you factor in the, um, the cost of that, in the, the in the law in the cost of making it more complex for one or two years, for a few users i think the balance tips in the way of protection Yeah, and this goes in the sense of educating. Yeah, so it's in the sense of trying to educate users of getting away of this, because this this is kind of what you get when your password policy revolves around those typical complexity of you need a, a lowercase, you need a higher, uh, an uppercase, you need digits, you need symbols. You end up with this via, you know human behavior finding shortcuts and actually our own normal use because you write like this so when you write the sentence you start with an uppercase everything is lower you put ex you put punctuation at the end of a sentence mm -hmm. write something comma write something exclamation point so it's, it's like a normal behavior that you are used Some yeah. are really hard to do and hard to remember, but they're yeah. not something in the extra security. Exactly, exactly. So for, again, going back to the beginning, for software developers who do our own apps and try to make them secure, let's shy away of these things and try to go for my, more for length. Would you advise the social uh, plugins for that instead of creating our own password using the social login? Yeah. Yeah, it depends on the use case. If you have a, in, in some cases, that's not a, a possibility. So if you have a, an app that's for a company, you need to log in with the company email, for instance. Um, user websites might, yeah, might use it, but, well. That's what I was going to say. LinkedIn is the way up there on top. Yeah. You mentioned one interesting thing in the uh, in the in the presentation. So it, the presentation is done by a white hat hacker. So he's hired by companies to come in and try to find vulnerabilities. And first approach is, is like grabbing known common most common passwords of linkedin exploits and just trying those and people tend to reuse passwords um if you know the the company has a rotation policy of six months trying summer 17. someone is bound to have chosen summer 17. so it goes vpn access just one shot per user so it doesn't trip any blocking of uh, repeated failures I just try summer 17 for each user and then if a company of thousand to thousand users some of them respond to you have used that and is in in the vpn which yeah once you find the pattern of the company yeah 
And that's it for me. So, hope you enjoyed it.